Hey, welcome back to Advent On Demand. I'm Dave Hall, the pastor here at Joy Lutheran Church in Billings, and good to be with you again this week. It is that time of year when we're spending more time in the kitchen, isn't it? From Thanksgiving to Christmas, and then you throw in some parties, maybe a wedding or a birthday or an anniversary, or maybe even a funeral, and there's a lot of eating that happens this time of year, followed up by Easter. All times when we tend to get together and that gathering is around food. Now the food itself isn't necessarily what makes the gathering, although it can leave some interesting memories for some of us, but it does provide a way of facilitating some connections, some conversation, some time together. So it's no surprise to me that as God speaks to the prophet Isaiah and gives us a picture of that world that is waiting for us, he gives us a picture of a meal and not just any meal. Let's take a look at this verse from Isaiah. Isaiah 25, verse 6. But here on this mountain, God of the angel armies will throw a feast for all the people of the world, a feast of the finest foods, a feast with vintage wines, a feast of seven courses, a feast lavish with gourmet desserts. Wow. It sounds amazing, doesn't it? It sounds like Christmas, New Year's, Easter, all rolled up into one with maybe an exponential thrown in there. The best of the best of the best of everything. Now, I know that our gatherings don't always turn out that way. Uh, early on, when Stacy and I were married, we were on my internship in Moorhead, Minnesota, and I remember it was Thanksgiving, we were in a rented apartment, her parents were there, and the heating element went out in the oven. We ended up cooking the turkey in the microwave. I still don't remember much about that meal other than the preparation was very different that year. During uh, even before that, before Stacy and I got married, I remember her being with me for a family meal. And I don't remember what the celebration was, but I can see all the faces around the table. My grandmother was a bit of a gourmet cook. She even subscribed to Gourmet Magazine. And generally her meals were just absolutely five-star amazing. But this was during her, what I've called the orange peel days, the grated orange peel days. There was a trend going on in the food industry at that point where you would grate orange peel into things and it just doesn't work for me. So for this meal, she decided she wanted to try something new. She had never made a duck before, so she made duck l'orange. The duck was good. The stuffing l'orange with the grated orange peel in it, yeah, not quite as positively memorable. But yet I do remember there was a lot of good conversation around the table and it was a good time for us to be together. And yet we also hear that that's just a, a glimmer of what we get in that next life as we get to be around God's dinner table with God giving us the best of the best of the best. But for right now we get to wait. And waiting isn't always easy. This time of year, especially with Christmas coming up, I think waiting is hardest for children. As adults, sometimes we want a little more time or maybe even a lot more time, but the kids are ready. As soon as the, the tree goes up, as soon as they start seeing presents, they, they wanna know what's there. Now, my grandmother used to not even put tags on presents. She had a way of hiding an initial uh, somewhere on the package, so she knew whose gifts went to who, but if you looked at the tree, you would never be able to figure out which ones were yours. But there are other things that we have a hard time waiting for. You know, maybe it's been a tough year for you and you just can't wait for that calendar to turn. Maybe you're afraid or maybe you're tired of the, the conflict that you maybe have in your workplace or with a friend or a neighbor or a family member and you just can't wait for that conflict, that tension to be, to just not be there anymore. Maybe you've fallen on hard times. You're going, oh, when are we going to get out of this? Maybe you're in a tough job and you're looking for something else, almost anything else to come, 
and you're getting impatient. Or maybe you're just stressed. It's been a stressful few years for us here in the U.S. with the pandemic, with the election, with all of the division, all of the chaos. And some of us just are tired of it. We're ready to, ready to turn the page, ready to find a new book and open it, right? And so we wait. And we wait knowing that at the right time, Jesus is going to come back. And, and all of these things that are dragging us down, all of these things that are, are weighing on us will go away. But waiting is hard. A couple of years ago, we were in Superior, Colorado. We just had a small family gathering, and I can't remember if it was Thanksgiving or Christmas, but the turkey was taking a lot longer than anticipated to cook. And we were getting hungry. We were getting hungry, and we were wondering, how much longer are we gonna wait for this bird before we just do a backwards meal? You know, start with pie first. Sometimes when we're waiting, we need to take time to, well, just grab a snack. Grab something to help tide us over, to help give us a little bit of boost of energy, to, to help maybe distract us a little bit from the, the stuff that we're waiting to get out of the way or to come into our reality and to move on. And God gives us a meal that kind of functions that way. This meal that we celebrate called communion or the Lord's Supper, or the Lord's Table, the Eucharist, um, it goes by a lot of different names, but it's the same meal. And its roots are in a meal that Jesus celebrated with his disciples. Celebrated this meal with his disciples three times in the book of John during his ministry. And, and being a good Hebrew Jewish man, Jesus would have celebrated this meal every year. You may have guessed it, the meal's name is Passover. It was a meal that the Jewish people, it's a meal they continue to celebrate, and it's a reminder of God rescuing them from slavery in Egypt, reminding them of how they were in a dark time and it was just there was no hope. And then God delivered them, and he guided them through wilderness wanderings for 40 years and then placed them on a land that was theirs. This meal of communion is also a reminder for us that we have been rescued. We've been rescued through Jesus' perfect life, death, and resurrection. And in this meal, he not only gives us bread and wine, he gives us also his body and blood, and he gives us forgiveness to give us strength for this journey, this journey that we're on, this journey that is ahead. So let's go back to Isaiah. Isaiah 25, verses 7 and 8. And here on this mountain, God will banish the pall of doom hanging over all peoples the shadow of doom darkening all nations. Yes, he'll banish death forever, and God will wipe the tears from every face. He'll remove every sign of disgrace from his people, wherever they are. Yes, God says so. What a great vision of the future, right? On this mountain, God will banish doom. He'll get rid of all the bad stuff that's there. The land of Canaan that the Israelites landed in uh, was, well, filled with people called Canaanites, right? And the Canaanites followed a religion that had multiple gods, and one of those gods was the god of death. The god of death's name was Mot. Happens to also be the Hebrew name for death. And this god Mot would swallow up people. That was the, the legend behind this god. And yet, as God speaks here through Isaiah, God speaks of swallowing death itself of swallowing the one who takes things away from us. And as God does that, he promises to give us an amazing future. A future without pain, a future without sorrow, without heartache, without tears, without struggle. A future where everything is perfectly perfect and life is vibrant and enjoyable and it's, well, paradise. And it's something that we're waiting for that's not yet here, just as we're waiting for Christmas. And yet as we wait for Christmas and as we make our way there this year, we have a lot to be thankful for. Now for some of us, we're gonna have to dig a little harder than others because well, maybe the year has just been one of those years. And yet if you're still breathing, and if you're living here in the United States, those are blessings. 
and a lot to be thankful for. And the people that you're gathering with and the people that reach out and care for you in many and different ways, more things to be thankful for. We can be thankful for our health, for our families, for the opportunities that God gives us, for those relationships that add to our lives and make our lives that much more rich, for the events that we get to celebrate this month as we get together with family and friends and, and have some laughter and maybe have some food and some more food and search for you know a set of buffet pants with the, you know, the elastic stretchy lining in them uh, because we just had too much food. But you get the idea. We have a lot to be thankful for. And food many times is at the center of those things. Again, I want to go back to Isaiah for uh, one more thought. Isaiah 25, 9. Also at that time, people will say, look at what's happened. This is our God. We waited for him and he showed up and saved us. This God, the one we waited for, let's celebrate. Sing the joys of his salvation. As we get to celebrate Christmas, we celebrate God fulfilling the promise that he would send his son. He would send a deliverer like he sent Moses to the Israelites. He sent Jesus for us. And Jesus promises to come back again. He promises to spill, fill the sky with angels, with the sound of trumpets, and it's going to be something that nobody's going to miss out on. In the meantime, we get to celebrate his first coming and the gifts that God gives us from that. The gift of Emmanuel, that God is with us and that God hears our prayers. He continues to reach into our lives, to strengthen us, to encourage us, to lead us, to guide us, to, to help us learn those lessons that we wish we didn't have to learn the hard way, and to continue to walk with us, to walk with us into that next world where we'll get to embrace the reality of what Jesus said to his disciples at his last supper in Matthew 26. Jesus said, I'll not be drinking wine from this cup again until that new day when I'll drink with you in the kingdom of my Father. That's ultimately what we get to look forward to. But in the meantime, Christmas celebrations, they're fun, they're enjoyable. Enjoy connecting with your family and friends. Enjoy celebrating the gifts that God has given you through Jesus. Again, happy holidays from us here at Joy Lutheran Church, from me, I'm Dave Hall, and look forward to connecting with you again next week.